The 19th century was considered the golden age of steam power. This technology dominated transportation and industry across the modern world. And during this time, engineers built many peculiar and whimsical vehicles that look like they belong in a steampunk universe. So get ready to blow off some steam and join me. We're gonna count down 15 of the strangest steam-powered vehicles ever made. Number 15, the Black Pearl Steam-Powered Motorcycle. The Black Pearl was unveiled at the Big Twin Bike Show in Holland next to a poster of world-famous pirate Captain Jack Sparrow. But unlike that titular sea vessel, the Black Pearl is a land vehicle powered by a steam engine. It's also very real. Constructed by Dutch company Ravatu Customs, the two-wheeled locomotive is a fully functioning motorcycle, albeit a slow one. Although custom specialist René Van Tweel, owner of Ravatu, makes no effort to hide what inspired the name of his latest creation. It's a 2011 design by Colby Higgins that's likely to have sparked his creative flame. Named the Trainwreck Bike, his 3D rendering came about as he was exploring his fashion mechanics and drew considerable publicity. Staying faithful to the Trainwreck's design, Van Tweel built a motorcycle whose locomotive inspiration is obvious from every angle. The final transmission, an exposed crankshaft rotating the rear wheels by means of an eccentric pivot, it mimics a steam train's engine both mechanically and visually. Adding the bell and steam horn doesn't really steer the mind away from trains either. A setup more familiar to the typical motorcyclist can be found at the front, where the two shock absorbers connect the steering to the wheel through a trailing link structure, housing a drum brake assigned with the task of stopping this thing. More importantly, the Black Pearl is a motorcycle that one can actually ride. There's no official technical description, no mention of horsepower, torque, or weight figures. In fact, the only thing I do know is its top speed, a safe and sound 5 miles an hour, barely enough to outpace a pedestrian. It probably is not going to set the asphalt on fire, which is ironic considering the built-in boiler. But what it certainly is, is it's unlike anything else on two wheels. And the coolest part about this thing is that there's only one in existence, making it the world's rarest steam-powered ride. Number 14. Sentinel DG-8 Steam Wagon all right, this is an awesome and iconic steam-powered vehicle that emerged in the early 20th century. It was produced by Sentinel Wagon Works in England. The DG-8 steam wagon was designed as a heavy-duty commercial vehicle capable of hauling substantial loads across various terrains and looked quite cool doing it. One of the more notable features was its innovative steam engine design. Unlike traditional steam engines that require a separate boiler and engine, the DG-8 incorporated a compact, vertical, water tube boiler directly into the vehicle chassis. This integration reduced the overall size and weight of the vehicle while improving efficiency. The steam engine utilized a multi-cylinder configuration, with three cylinders mounted vertically. The high-pressure steam generated by the boiler was directed into these cylinders, where it expanded, driving the pistons and creating rotational motion. This vertical boiler design allowed for quick steam generation and reduced startup time. One of the most unique characteristics of this thing outside of the engine is its distinctive appearance. It features a cab positioned at the front with a large vertical boiler and smokestack prominently displayed. The boiler's exposed nature adds to the wagon's charm, making it instantly recognizable on the roads. Over time, as advancements in internal combustion engines and electric motors emerged, the popularity of steam-powered vehicles waned. However, the Sentinel DG-8 steam wagon remains a significant part of transportation history, proudly showing off the engineering excellence of its time. Today, enthusiasts and collectors are still drooling over this thing, but hey, can anyone really blame them? Number 13. Michelin Pneumatic Tired Rail Car the Michelin Pneumatic Tired Rail Car, also known as Michelin, was a groundbreaking steam-powered rail car that emerged in the early 20th century. It was designed and developed by the French tire manufacturer Michelin, and this innovative vehicle combined the advantages of both rail and road transportation. The most distinctive feature of this thing was its unique wheel design. Instead of traditional steel wheels, the Michelin incorporated large pneumatic tires similar to those used on automobiles. These tires were mounted on special wheel rims that could adapt to both the railway tracks and the road surface, making the vehicle versatile and capable of transitioning between the two. The use of pneumatic tires, though, provided several advantages. The tires offered a smoother ride, reducing vibrations and noise compared to traditional steel wheels. They also improved the vehicle's grip on the tracks, enhancing safety and stability. These tires allowed for higher speeds, too, and better shock absorption, resulting in increased passenger comfort. 
This rail car was obviously powered by a steam engine, which drove the vehicle's one-of-a-kind wheels. The steam engine provided necessary power for propulsion and maintained a constant speed, making the Michelin effective and reliable. The innovative design and advanced technology of this garnered attention worldwide, and it set a new standard in rail car engineering. This rail car was initially used for passenger transportation, offering a more comfortable and efficient alternative to traditional trains. Its ability to transition from railway tracks to roads made it particularly useful for rural areas with limited rail connections. However, the Michelin's success was short-lived due to the rapid advancements in internal combustion engine technology, which did ultimately lead to the rise of diesel-powered trains. Although the Michelin pneumatic tired rail car had a relatively brief period of significance, it left a lasting impact on the transportation industry, and we do all know the Michelin name today. Its unique pneumatic tire technology influenced the development of future rail and road vehicles. Today, pneumatic tires are a common feature in both automobiles and trains, providing improved performance, comfort, and safety. Number 12. Bill Bessler's 1969 Chevelle in the late 1960s, the U.S. government asked car companies to come up with ways to make their cars pollute less. Smog had recently become a big concern, particularly in California, and the suits encouraged the car makers to be creative. GM ran through the various ideas that they hadn't tried recently, and one thought popped up. What about steam? When cars were first being developed, steam engines were quite common, but we all know that gasoline-powered cars quickly took over. By the end of the 1920s, steam had fallen by the wayside, but Bill Bessler didn't get that memo. Bessler had built and flown a steam-powered airplane in 1933. He also bought the remains of the Doble Company when it went defunct, continuing to tinker with steam well into the 1960s. In 1969, General Motors Research Labs invited Bessler to collaborate on a new project. The automaker gave him a 1969 Chevelle and a list of parameters to try to hit with a steam power plant in the car. Seven months later, Bessler delivered the SE-124 to GM. From the outside, there are only a few clues as to what powers the car. There's a small cap on the right rear quarter labeled water, and there are cooling vents cut into the hood and both front fenders. But under the hood, things start to get a little strange. For an engine, Bessler sawed a V8 in half, keeping the rear portion that was attached to the bell housing, allowing him to retain the three-speed manual transmission in the car. Bessler then replumbed the block to handle steam. Instead of a gasoline internal combustion engine, it became a double-acting compound steam engine, so named because the pistons generate power going in both directions. When on the driver's side, the steam is in a high-pressure cylinder. The steam leaves that cylinder and is routed through the other side of the V, where it runs through a low-pressure cylinder. The steam exhausted from the cylinder then heads to a condenser, which looks an awful lot like a radiator, where it cools back into water that's recycled to start the trip all over again. The steam Chevelle could generate steam in 30 seconds and had a full head of steam within two minutes. The car could do 65 miles an hour and reportedly got 15 miles per gallon, which was decent efficiency for the time. Number 11. British K-Class Submarines The British K-Class Submarines were a group of steam-powered subs developed for the Royal Navy during World War I. These submarines were an awesome attempt to create fast and powerful vessels that could outrun and outgun the enemy ships. The K-Class subs were large and unconventional compared to their contemporaries. They featured a unique twin hull design, with one hull containing the pressure hull and the other housing the steam propulsion system. The steam power plant was the key feature of the K-Class, as it provided the subs with remarkable speed for that era. This propulsion system consisted of oil-fired boilers that generated steam, which in turn drove turbines connected to the propeller shafts. This setup allowed the K-Class subs to achieve high speeds both on the surface and while submerged. They were among the fastest submarines of their time, capable of reaching speeds up to 24 knots on the surface. However, this class submarine faced significant challenges and setbacks. Their size and complexity made them difficult to handle, and their high-speed capability came at the expense of other essential characteristics, mainly maneuverability and reliability. They also had a substantial crew complement, requiring a larger crew than World War I-era subs. The K-Class subs also experienced a tragic incident in 1917 at the Battle of May Island. During a fleet exercise, several K-Class submarines collided with each other, resulting in loss of multiple subs and crew members. This incident highlighted the difficulties associated with operating and controlling these large and complex vessels, and the steam-powered submarine program was laid to rest. 
But despite their flaws and setbacks, the K-Class subs played a significant role in the war. They were deployed for patrol and offensive operations, mainly in the North Sea. The onset of World War I brought about significant technological developments, many of which we still use today. But sadly for steam, these subs were not one of them. Sometimes, good ideas go down with the ship. Number 10. The Fowler Ghost the Fowler Ghost was a remarkable and peculiar steam locomotive that emerged during the early 20th century. Designed and built by Fowler Locomotive Works, it gained an unusual name due to its distinctive appearance and eerie aesthetic. The most striking feature of the Fowler Ghost was its streamlined design, which gave it a futuristic and unconventional look for the time. It had a fully enclosed body resembling a smooth, elongated capsule and a unique cowcatcher shaped like a skeletal hand. The overall effect was otherworldly and ghastly, unlike any other locomotive of this era. This ghoulish locomotive was known for its promising speed and performance. Its streamlined design reduced air resistance, allowing for a smoother and more efficient movement. It was often used on express passenger services where its sleek and impressive power captivated both passengers and onlookers. But despite its eye-catching appearance, the Fowler Ghost faced mixed reactions. Some admired its innovative design and contribution to pushing the boundaries of locomotive engineering. Others found its unconventional shape unsettling. But sadly for the steam-powered machine, the Fowler Ghost lived up to its namesake, having a short operational life. With the advent of diesel and electric locomotive, steam power gradually declined, and the Ghost was retired from service. Today, no surviving examples of the Fowler Ghost remain, leaving only photographs and historical accounts to preserve its memory. The nice streamlined design made it an iconic symbol of the bold experimentation and innovation of the early 20th century. It serves as a fun little reminder of the diverse and often eccentric locomotives that once roamed the railways, leaving an indelible mark in the history of railway engineering. Because they no longer exist, the Fowler Ghost is really one of a kind. And if you didn't see it then, well, then call in a psychic. Number 9. The Bear Garrett the Bayer Garrett locomotive is an awesome example of strange steam locomotive engineering, and built by the British firm Bayer, Peacock & Gorton Foundry. It does represent a significant innovation in locomotive design. What sets it apart is its unique articulated configuration. The locomotive features two separate power units, each with its own boiler and engine mounted on a single frame. This arrangement allows for a larger and more powerful locomotive while distributing weight evenly across the multiple axles. Its articulated design provides several advantages. Those multiple axles and that distributed weight result in improved traction, making it ideal for handling heavier loads and traversing challenging terrains. Its immense size and power make it a formidable machine as it chugs down the railway. It was notably used in various countries, including South Africa, Australia, and Wales, where it tackled steep gradients and hauled heavy freight trains behind it. With that impressive hauling capacity, it became a preferred choice for transporting coal, minerals, and other bulky goods. Despite all the impressive capabilities, the Bayer Garrett faced challenges as diesel and electric locomotives gained popularity. The last one was produced in the 1960s, marking an end of an era for steam power. Today, several preserved Bayer Garrett locomotives can be found in museums and heritage railways, providing a glimpse into the engineering marvels of the past and stands as an iconic symbol of the golden age of steam. Its unique articulated design, immense power, and versatility have captured the admiration of railway enthusiasts and historians alike. Number 8. Steam-Powered Helicopter Alright, unlike traditional helicopters that rely on internal combustion engines or electric motors, the steam-powered helicopter it utilizes the power of steam to still achieve lift and propulsion. At its core, the steam-powered helicopter consists of a steam engine that drives the rotor system. Just throw some coal or wood into the engine and just let her rip. The water boils, the rotor blades spin, and the lift is created and away we go. The steam-powered helicopter presents as many challenges as it does advantages compared to conventional ones. On one hand, the steam engines tend to be larger and heavier than their combustion or electric counterparts, which can impact the overall weight and maneuverability of the aircraft. Additionally, steam engines require a significant amount of fuel and water to generate steam, leading to additional logistical considerations. And if you're looking to successfully operate and navigate a steam-powered chopper, then you better be an ace pilot, too. The steam-powered helicopter also offers unique advantages. Steam engines are known for their high torque output, which can provide exceptional lifting power, making them capable of carrying heavier payloads. Moreover, steam power is a lot more environmentally friendly compared to fossil fuel combustion engines, as it produces fewer harmful emissions. 
While the steam-powered helicopter may not be a practical solution for modern-day aviation due to the challenges associated with steam engines, it represents an intriguing chapter in the history of small-scale flight. It puts an old spin on newer technology, and while we may not see a steam-powered helicopter go commercial, they do show up at air shows every year. Moving on to number 7, Steam-Powered Bicycles Okay, may sound a little too crazy to be true, but the steam-powered bicycle does exist. While it may not be flying off the shelves of your local bike shop, people are building these in their backyards all the time. The steam-powered bike is a fun marriage of vintage charm and modern comforts. Instead of relying on conventional pedals, this steamy little contraption harnesses the power of steam to propel riders forward. At first glance, the steam-powered bike appears similar to its pedal-powered counterpart, with its two wheels, handlebars, and frame. However, upon closer inspection, it reveals the intricately designed steam engine integrated into the frame. They are small, but they can generate some big power. In theory, a good engine will generate enough power to move the bike forward, replacing the need for human pedaling. So to ride this thing, riders must first stoke the boiler with fuel such as coal or wood. As the fuel burns, it heats the water within the boiler, creating steam. The pressure from the steam drives a piston, which in turn rotates the bike's wheels, propelling it forward. A series of gears and mechanisms to help convert that linear motion of the piston into rotational motion for the wheels is there. The experience of riding a steam-powered bike is nothing short of extraordinary. You become a steampunk cyclist embarking on their journeys. They can relish the rhythmic chugging sound and the gentle release of steam from the engine. The sensation of being propelled forward without the need for physical exertion kind of adds to the touch of wonder and nostalgia to this thing, and maybe a little extra heat. Steam-powered bikes are mostly seen as novelties or collector items, as the practicality of them has been superseded by more efficient and accessible energy sources. Nevertheless, these remarkable machines continue to captivate the imagination of enthusiasts, and it serves as a testament to the human desire for innovation, exploration, and what the individual could achieve with a little elbow grease. Number 6. Jay Leno's 1914 Christie Fire Engine Jay Leno is known for a lot of things. The comedian has a long and illustrious career as a stand-up comic, late-night show host, and famously plays himself in dozens of films and TV shows. But the American icon is also known for his insane love of cars. As of 2022, Leno is said to own over 180 automobiles. Many of them stand out for their own reasons, but his 1914 Christie Fire Engine fits perfectly onto this list. The 1914 Christie Fire Engine was manufactured by the Christie Fire Engine Company, which was founded by J. Walter Christie. This particular fire engine model featured an innovative design with a front-mounted high-pressure water cannon and a distinctive wooden body. What sets this one apart is not only the historical significance, but also its meticulous restored condition. Jay Leno is known for his passion for classic cars and commitment to preserving automotive heritage. He's ensured that this fire engine has been expertly refurbished to its original glory. This fire engine showcases several unique features. Its front-mounted water cannon allowed firefighters to target flames directly. The wooden body, typical of fire engines from that era, is a testament to the craftsmanship of the time and adds to the vehicle's charm. Owning and maintaining a piece of firefighting history like the 1914 Christie Fire Engine requires dedication and expertise. Oh yeah, and a ton of cash. Leno often showcases his cars like this one in various media and public events. Its presence in Leno's collection and his efforts to showcase its historical significance does contribute to the appreciation and preservation of our automotive and firefighting heritage. And when you got over 180 cars in your garage, it's good to have a massive red steam-powered fire truck standing out amongst the others. Number 5. Whistling Billy One of the weirdest steam cars in history is the Whistling Billy, an experimental steam-powered vehicle developed by brothers Frank and Charles Duraya in the late 19th centuries. The Whistling Billy was unique not only in its design, but also in its sound. It earned its name due to the distinct high-pitched whistle it produced while in operation, which was caused by the steam escaping through its exhaust pipe. This car featured an unconventional arrangement with two vertical boilers positioned at the front of the vehicle, which provided steam to power the engine. The steam was then fed into a two-cylinder engine, and what made it truly strange was its appearance. It had an elongated, narrow body with a skeletal frame exposing the internal components. The wheels were oversized and positioned at the extreme ends of the car, creating a rather unbalanced and peculiar look. It was also known for its impressive speed and performance. In fact, it set several speed records during its time, including reaching a top speed of 64 miles an hour in 1899. That made it one of the fastest vehicles of its era. 
Over time, the whistling Billy faded into obscurity, and no surviving examples remain today. However, it's a legacy as a peculiar and high-speed steam car lives on. It stands as a testament to the experimental nature of early automobile development and the quest for innovation in steam-powered vehicles. The awesome appearance, the unusual sound, and impressive performance make it a standout among the many peculiar steam cars of the past. Number 4. The Bessemer Centipede one of the weirdest looking steam locomotives in history, the Bessemer Centipede, designed by Sir Henry Bessemer, a prominent engineer and inventor, it had a truly bizarre appearance. The locomotive featured an elongated, segmented body that resembled a centipede, hence its name. It had a series of individual steam-powered units, each with its own boiler and engine, connected together to form a long and flexible train-like structure. This unique design allowed for increased flexibility and maneuverability on curves and uneven tracks. It was equipped with numerous wheels, both large and small, which were strategically positioned along its body. This intricate wheel arrangement, combined with the segmented design, it aimed to distribute weight evenly and ensure better traction. The complex nature of its construction, including the individual steam units and the intricate wheel arrangement, made maintenance and operation complicated and time-consuming. It struggled with stability issues, especially at higher speeds, which limited its practical use. While the Bessemer Centipede showcased an interesting and unconventional approach to locomotive design, it ultimately failed to gain widespread acceptance. Only one prototype was ever built, and it never entered regular service. It seems, though, that the cards were stacked against this steam-powered centipede from the beginning. Everyone wanted to invent the next best thing when it came to locomotives, but bigger and more intricate didn't always mean better. Most of the time, it's simplicity that's going to win the gold. But even though the Bessemer Centipede didn't quite work out the way the engineer wanted it to, it did still play an important role in steam powered technology, showing what people not to do. Number 3. The Calliope A calliope is a musical instrument consisting of a series of steam whistles mounted on a steam powered mechanism. It's known for its loud and vibrant sound, often associated with circus performance, amusement parks, and riverboats. The Calliope's name is derived from the Greek Muse Calliope, who was the muse of eloquence and epic poetry. Now, it's typically constructed with multiple ranks of whistles. A Calliope produces a sound by releasing steam into these whistles, creating that high-pitched and piercing tone. The whistles are arranged in chromatic order, allowing a wide range of musical notes to be played. The steam pressure can be controlled to vary the volume and intensity of the music produced, and chances are most people have heard the songs of a Calliope and simply didn't know what it was called. Its energetic and cheerful sound has made it a popular attraction and source of entertainment. Its presence can transform any event or parade into a lively and festive atmosphere. The instrument's distinct sound carries over long distances, grabbing attention of listeners and evoking a sense of joy and nostalgia, especially when sounding off at a carousel. Though the Calliope has its roots in the steam-powered era, modern versions may use compressed air or electronic means to generate sound. Nevertheless, the traditional steam-powered Calliope remains an iconic symbol of whimsy, merriment, and the countless unique ways steam could be harnessed. Number 2. The Man of Steam Zadok de Derek's Steam Man was a remarkable and peculiar invention of the 19th century that captured the imagination of the public. Designed and constructed by Mr. Dederick, an engineer and inventor from New York, the Steam Man was an early example of a humanoid mechanical contraption. This Steam Man stood at an impressive height of over 12 feet tall and was powered by a steam engine housed within it. This engine drove a series of gears and levers that replicated human movements, allowing the Steam Man to walk and even perform basic actions like waving its arms. It was patented in 1896, and the Steam Man became a popular attraction at exhibitions and fairs, drawing crowds of curious onlookers who marveled at its capabilities. The control mechanisms required precise coordination, and the Steam Man's movements were not always smooth or fluid. Nevertheless, it still captivated audiences and ignited discussions about the possibility of steam-powered robotics, so much so that it inspired Edward Ellis's 1868 novel, The Steam Man of the Prairies, in which a steam-powered robot carries teenage inventor Johnny Brainerd through a series of adventures. But Dederic's Steam Man was a precursor to later advancements in robotics and automation. I think it foreshadowed the development of more sophisticated humanoid robots that would come decades later. If it weren't for the Steam Man, we wouldn't have companies like Boston Dynamics. Unfortunately, the exact fate of Dederic's Steam Man is unclear. There are accounts of the Steam Man making appearances at exhibitions, but over time, its existence faded into obscurity. Number 1. The Inspiration The Inspiration Steam Car is a remarkable vehicle that holds the distinction of holding the world record for the fastest steam-powered car. 
It was developed by a team of engineers and enthusiasts. This extraordinary vehicle combines the elegance of vintage automobiles with the power of steam. It broke the long-standing steam car speed record on August 25, 2009 at the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. It reached an astounding speed of 148.3 miles per hour, surpassing the previous record that stood for over 100 years and leaving a big puffy steam cloud in its wake. What makes this steam car even more impressive is its use of advanced engineering and design principles. It features a sleek and aerodynamic body carefully crafted to minimize air resistance and maximize performance. As we can come to expect with Steam Power, the team behind this Inspiration Steam Car faced plenty of challenges before finding steam-powered success. The team had to fine-tune the vehicle's system, ensuring a consistent and reliable steam supply to propel the car at high speeds. The driver's skill and expertise were also crucial in maintaining control and stability, and managing not to blow up the engine and walk away from the car unscathed and unboiled. But while steam technology has been largely overshadowed by internal combustion engines and electric propulsion, this feat does serve as a reminder of the remarkable capabilities of steam as a power source. Beyond going 140 miles an hour, though, the Inspiration Steam Car inspires curiosity and interest in history and development of steam-powered vehicles. The golden era of steam may be long gone, but it doesn't mean that it can't work in modern society. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.